Hey guys, what's up? This is Tim with the Geeked Up Game Review Group, and we're going to bring you guys a review of a tabletop game called Adapt by Gatekeeper Games. And the details say that it is two to three players and it expands to five. It's 30 minutes, usually, is what this says. Ages seven and up includes dice, three sets of seven, and then it has the Gatekeeper Games logo there. So uh, if you guys are watching this video and want to know more details about how to play and everything, you guys can check it out. Uh, on the uh, Kickstarter, so uh, it's like a it's like a little cute little game uh, where you take like this these two little guppies here, and you upgrade them. You upgrade their fins and their jaws, uh, mouth and body, all that stuff. And you have to start from a level zero and work your way up. So um, yeah, so let's go ahead and go over to the table and put this down on the tabletop and show you guys how it's laid out and how to play. All right. Alright guys, so here we have all the components to the game. We have your player board where you will keep your your body and all of your attachments to your guppy fish. We have the four guppies, uh, blue, red, yellow, and green. And I will bring one up closer so you can see what those look like. So it's going to be like that. And it's going to have your starting health and then your, what is the below the health? This one here? Um, survival. Yes. And then you're going to have your attack power and all of that, but you won't have anything right away, and you will not have a level right away, um, because you're a level zero. So you start as a level zero, and your body is gonna start in the center of your playmat, and then you will start at adding attachments and everything. The and it's dice- It's gonna come with three or four it sets It will come of with dice. three sets of seven dice, as I was saying earlier, um, in the beginning of the video. And these are actually our personal dice. Uh, there will be dice, I think, color coordinated with the actual guppies. So if you choose a green one, you can get green dice and uh, stuff like that. And it's actually going to be half these dice in the sets. Um, and there's actually uh, more info on that in the Kickstarter. So if you guys check that out, you'll know all about the half these dice uh, company. So this is the box that it came in uh, that we sh I showed you earlier. So this is uh, a prototype. So keep that in mind when we're looking at the components. So these won't be the final artwork or anything. And uh, and then there on the bottom, uh, it shows you the company logo and two to three players expands to five. 30 minutes, usually. Is that Stuff what like it that. says? It says usually. Oh. <laughs> okay, so here is a player aid that will help you know what all of the components are um, of the card, not components of the game. Right, um, what each symbol will be on the card. But in the game, you're going to choose your guppy and you're going to start off with it in the center. And as you play, you're going to adapt things like a dorsal. And all of the cards have a little marker here to where they go. And then you'll upgrade your body. Yeah, so what Anna was saying on the marker, so like on the tail, it's actually got the yellow tab here. Uh, on the left hand side of the card. So then that would match the same symbol in where the card is be able to be applied. So you would actually match those yellow marks and then just put it there inside that and they're all marked like that. Like the special is actually marked in the top left hand corner and then also the mat is marked in the top left hand corner. So you can put it there. And like your skin and like normally you'd look at that and be like oh that's the body but it's not. It's the skin. Um, you're gonna build up to like great white sharks and orcas and all kinds and of stuff. There's a sea turtle in there too. Yeah. And then you get um, some special like horns, like you can get an anglerfish or you can get a swordfish type type of horn. And, and you then can upgrade like your organ, like a brain, and that's just gonna give you special abilities. But the motto of this game is that you're always gonna move forward. You're never going to go back. You're always just going to be moving forward as you upgrade. Yes, and the way that you upgrade is you're actually going to start at level zero. So this is going to be level zero. And to see the um, little tick mark here uh, on the top here, let me see if I can get that to show up on there without giving any shadow. Apparently my thumb's going to cast a shadow. So right there in the little waves right here, You'll see that little orange piece there. That's a level one. And then as those are marked up, it'll be two of them highlighted as level two, level three, and level four. 
So like this one uh, is a level four. And you have to start with, so like when you're at level zero, you actually have to start and put the piece in to go to level one. And then you can put up the next body part to level two. And then you have to go tier by tier. You can't jump from level zero to level five. On your body you can't, but on your... Yeah, on, on your attachments. It's up to two. You can go up two levels above where you're at. And that's going to start leveling your character up. <clears throat> and the cost is here. There's going to be like a, a river. They call it something. Yeah, catchy. so you would have <clears throat> all the pieces laid out. So you would have your deck here. <laughs> and then your pieces would start laying out like this. So you would have basically your... I call it a river from playing uh, poker games. But anyways... So, I'm trying to look up the name. We said it while we were playing. I thought playing. it was like the genetic stream or something like that. Yeah. The gene stream. It's right here. Yeah, the gene stream. The gene yeah, stream. Yeah, the gene stream. And then you have a personal gene pool <coughs> because you can buy things, but if it's not able to be attached, you have a personal gene pool of three slots that you can keep. Yeah, so if you had your player board here, you could actually put the cards down below your player board. Um, so this would be the gene stream. This is... Uh, basically all of the genes and then here's your stream these are the three that you have and then you would accumulate and buy them uh, with the points you have and you get three points per turn and if you decide not and to you keep track of that on the d20 and the other dice are used for on your body you can see here it tells you what die to roll which I mean this is a review so I'm gonna be completely honest um, I think that they should just put something there because it's really hard to see yeah I, and it might be clear with the new cards the new art but but like yeah. the way that it's set up right now it's really hard to visually see uh, that on the card of what die you're supposed to roll so do you want to explain the combat between two fish um, combat is tallied up between all of your um, I'm sorry where did that little Bingo. I keep forget the term, sorry. Your ferocity. Um, you roll your die here, you tally up all your ferocity, and then you compare it to their survival. So it goes back and then you take damage and then your health is right here, so once you get put past your health, you actually subtract so there's a difference. Um, and then if you miss an attack, you get experience points that will help you buy more cards. And then if you get the same, they lose a point and then you gain an experience set amount. Yeah, and the points that you gain are actually going to cap at 20. Yeah. You can't go any further or higher than 20 on your points. So say if you're at 19 and you're going to gain the 3 for your turn, you're only going to go up to 20. So the 20 is nice, but there are cards out here that are kind of expensive uh, in spending your points. So like there's a 15 here and a 10 here. So if you wanted to get uh, echo, echo Location and you wanted to get Sailfish, then you would have to hope that nobody else on their turn is going to accumulate those uh, when you have the points. So Because this costs 15 for Sailfish. And a, a echo location actually costs ten. So, and then the difference between these are gonna uh, differentiate in attributes and everything. <coughs> yeah. Um. But nice references, nice. And I think he mentioned in his video that you don't have to play with the player mats, but it is really helpful. And I don't know why you wouldn't want to play with the player mats. I mean, I guess it is simple enough to play without the mats. Just remember that your outside corners and then your center to top and then your bodies are going to be all blue because they're going to be the center. So I guess you could do it without the mat. Um, but having the mat there is a nice little reference so you just put it there and you don't really have to think about it. And having the the Guides. 
Yeah, to which ones are marked. So uh, we did. So that's all the components that are going to come in the box, uh, minus the die. The die are going to be different than the ones that we have here. Um, so we showed you guys the uh, stream and the board, and then how everything lays out and everything. If you guys want to see a how to play video, he actually has one as his main video on the Kickstarter. So if you guys check that out on Kickstarter.com, and then just type in Adapt uh, by Kate Keeper Games, you guys can check that out. So we're going to go ahead and go over to uh, our conclusion. Alright guys, so we're going to come with our conclusion on Adapt by Gatekeeper Games uh, game a creator and company owner, John Rott. Um, he actually contacted us and wanted us to uh, do a review for the game and I want to thank uh, Lance uh, from Undead Viking Videos uh, for inviting us to do a weekly out of boom. Uh, we did that for like two or three weeks. Um, I need to see about getting back on there. But anyways, um, yeah, so we met John Roth through there, and then, then he asked us to do the review. So my thoughts on this game are... So, good things first is that there's a lot of combinations. And I've been really liking uh, Magic the Gathering, so this game having a lot of combinations on how to build a fish is really cool. Uh, so you can get different dorsal fins, different horns, different uh, mouths, and that gives you different attributes, and then you can... Uh, you know, the more you learn the game, the more you play the game, you're going to learn how to build this Alpha Omega type of a fish and attack your opponent and everything else. And uh, so it's kind of cool. So you can go from just a little guppy all the way up to like a shark or a sea turtle or a octopus, which I like to call it a kraken because then it just sounds more aggressive um, and stuff like that. So it's going to be really neat to see the finished artwork on some of the cards that weren't finished and stuff like that. So the artwork was a big, big, big... Uh, I think uh, attractiveness. Uh, maybe if the some of the characters on in the cards were more implemented on the box, I think it would be even more attractive. Like maybe have the octopus down in one corner and then the sea turtle in another corner look like they're charging each other and something like something like that. Because uh, right now the box just has like two little guppies on there. I think that maybe that could be amped up a little bit uh, to make it look more of a a battleground or something. Uh, or, or maybe it's supposed to be kid friendly. I, it does have the seven and up, so maybe that's a little too aggressive for kids. But um, for the ad adult part of it, I think that'd be really cool um, to to have that kind of an artwork. Uh, some of the things that we didn't like about it um, was that I feel like my character was t a, a level zero f for a, a while for a really long time, and maybe we just don't have the full count of cards, maybe that's what's going on with that, maybe we don't have the, I, I don't think we have, I really don't think we have enough of the cards, maybe it was just the prototype deck, so there was only so many cards, but there was only like uh, three level ones, so we had to like go through the whole deck pretty much to get to that final level one, we had to keep changing the gene stream uh, and stuff like that uh, to get to it, but um, um, So the other things that we kind of like had a, a issue with were the little token, like uh, what signified everything on the card. So the uh, the level counter, it was really hard to read because it was so small. So I don't know if maybe the cards would be able to go oversized, like a little bigger, or if they're going to stay as a standard size as they are right now. But the little token, the on on the the badge on the cards. Uh, telling you what level they are and stuff like that. They're really hard to read, uh, really hard to see the what die to roll for your uh, character's attribute on that particular part of the body. Um, could be a little bit more clear. I think maybe just writing, just having like D6 on there or D10 or whatever you have to roll or D8 um, would be a little bit more um, user friendly instead of having that because it was a green background and then the green dye so it's really hard to see green on green maybe if it was a green dye on a black background inside that little circle might have been able to see it a little easier but uh... yeah it was really hard to read so i mean as far as the mechanics of the game you know like the gene stream and building your character and everything it's pretty it's pretty cool so i think that the card count might have been just less with us and that's why it felt a little clunky but um, it was, a, it was a really neat uh, idea and aspect and stuff like that and really cool. 
And if you guys are really interested in seeing how the game fully plays and seeing a little bit more of the artwork and some of the um, closer to production style cards, you can check out the video. That's actually the main video on the Kickstarter. And I'll put that Kickstarter uh, down below this video and uh, get you guys a direct link to that. So if you guys are interested in seeing that, click that link down there. And uh, yeah, be sure to check it out. So it's on Kickstarter right now. I don't. I know it's been on there for like five or six days. So uh, we're a little late on pumping this review out. We've had plenty of time. John gave us plenty of time to do it. We've just, uh, you know, it seems like every time we get back to where we can do reviews, something else happens in life. So, uh, so anyways, so I want to thank John and uh, everybody at Gatekeeper Games for thinking about us and uh, giving us a copy of this. And we apologize for being late on the turnaround. And uh, hopefully we'll continue to work with you, John, and uh, we'll see you in the future and see what else you got uh, coming out. So uh, we'll see you guys later. I hope you guys enjoy the review. If you like us, please subscribe and check us out on Facebook.com. And then just type in Geeked Up Gaming, all one word, and you'll find us there. And also follow us on Twitter at Geeked Up Gaming 1. And then, if you would, follow John Rott. Uh, I believe it's at Gatekeeper Games. It might just be Gatekeeper because I know we can only put so many letters in our on our names, um, which that's okay. But anyways, you guys can probably just look up John Rotten and find him. All right, see you later.